here's more wrestling news for October 31st, 2022. And we're starting off this afternoon with WWE NXT as Ava Rain made her long-awaited TV debut last week, being revealed as the fourth member of the Schism. WWE's first fourth-generation superstar, Rain is the daughter of The Rock, which means she does have a connection to the bloodline. While Rain is a new face in NXT, Jimmy Uso is already excited for her future and told TMZ Sports that he is open to Ava joining the dominant main roster faction. I'm ready to see what she can do. I'm ready for her to pop off and represent the bloodline. We're all family. We all look out for her. She has the whole squad on her side. Rain initially signed with WWE in early 2020, but a series of injuries and surgeries have derailed her run so far. Now Ava Rain is on TV and will likely be a huge feature on NXT, given her family and her father, but we may be seeing her on the main roster alongside the Usos, Sola Sokoa, Sami Zayn, and Roman Reigns soon enough. One woman already on SmackDown is Emma, who made her return to WWE on last Friday's show, five years after being released from the company. In her first match back, the Australian star challenged for the SmackDown Women's Championship and though she was unsuccessful in winning the title, had her own personal victory. On Twitter, Emma reflected on her return and said how it came five years after her release from WWE, saying, Five years ago today I was heartbroken, feeling like my dream had come to an end. Today, my heart is so full. I'm overwhelmed by the amount of support I have. You guys are the best. Now I've got some unfinished business to take care of. The fact that Emma had a championship match on her first night back is a good sign for her, as she never held any titles during her first run and had very, very few title opportunities. During her time away, Emma worked for Impact Wrestling, where she became a Knockouts Tag Team Champion, but now she's ready to win gold in the company she first made her name in. Emma's return to WWE was a surprise to fans, but the company did not exactly work hard to keep her comeback under wraps. Fightful Select reports that unlike previous returns, Emma was not hidden backstage at the taping, which did lead to news of her being at SmackDown leaking shortly before her appearance on TV. The same report adds that Hit Row's tag team partner, which was revealed on the show to be Shinsuke Nakamura, was not kept secret either, despite this also being something WWE has done in the past. WWE has tried to keep things under wraps in the past, often with a mixed amount of success, but at least for last week's SmackDown, WWE wasn't too worried about details getting out. In June 2021, Lana was released from her contract with WWE, which came as a shock to fans. The manager-turned-wrestler had been prominently featured prior to her release, and it is reported that her high-dollar contract played a role in WWE's decision. Now going by her real name, CJ Perry, the former superstar hasn't wrestled since being released, but has spoken about her future in wrestling. Many fans want to see Perry reunite with her husband Miro in AEW, and on Busted Open Radio, she said that she'd love the chance to be All Elite. I feel I would love to go to AEW because the hardcore fans watch AEW. It's not all the commercial fans, that's the casual fan, and of course, to be with my husband. There's so many people over there that I love and miss. If it's Renee, Paige, Goldust, to experience a different promotion for sure would be interesting. But WWE, I mean, I love the storytelling when it comes to the soap opera part, which I feel AEW really focuses more on the wrestling and the matches and the sports part of it all, while WWE focuses on the sports part, on the wrestling, and then also the soap opera stories that entertain that. While she hopes to be All Elite, Perry said that she would not be opposed to a WWE return if the right circumstances arose with the new regime. Miro has made reference to Perry, who he has called his incredibly hot wife on AEW programming, but there is no word on whether she's spoken to Tony Khan, but it may just be a matter of time before she too is on the AEW roster. One WWE alum appearing regularly for AEW is William Regal, who had one of the best in-ring promos of his career recently with MJF. Given Regal's lengthy career and incredible mic skills, calling this one of the best promos of his career is sure saying something, but he and MJF created gold when discussing Friedman's attempts to make it in WWE. On his Gentleman Villain podcast, Regal discussed the promo, saying he had no idea what was going to be said before the promo began. During Regal's tenure with WWE, promos were often scripted word for word, though that has changed somewhat with Vince McMahon's retirement in July. 
At Full Gear, MJF will challenge AEW World Champion John Moxley in the biggest match of the Salt of the Earth's career, and it remains to be seen whether MJF will achieve what he believes to be his destiny. We mentioned earlier how Vince McMahon retired in July of this year after information leaked about hush money payments the former CEO allegedly made. It's claimed that McMahon paid over $12 million to various women to keep knowledge of his affairs secret, which included relationships with WWE employees. Since the now infamous Wall Street Journal report came out, there has been speculation as to whether this information was leaked, with Stephanie McMahon being the prime suspect to many fans. Stephanie, now chairwoman of WWE and co-CEO, has certainly done well for herself since her father's absence, but on Smack Talk, Dutch Mantel had his doubts that Stephanie did the deed. I don't think Stephanie leaked it out, but I don't think she had to either. Then again, and I hate to say this, but what if Vince McMahon eased her into this spot anyway? He helped her get there. McMahon's fall from his pro wrestling throne was a huge shock to fans, and something many fans thought they would never see. And while Stephanie now sits in his place, this wasn't the act of patricide some believe it was. For decades, the concept of a wrestler's court was around, allowing the wrestlers to decide disputes between themselves without having to get management involved. In WWE, The Undertaker always served as the judge, thanks in part to his status as a locker room leader, but there was one time when the dead man was put on trial. While speaking on Storytime with Dutch Mantel, the wrestling veteran recalled the Phenom's court date, saying he was put on trial for romancing the girls. Mantel explained that in this situation, he was the prosecutor and the judge, making for a pretty biased trial, and that The Undertaker denied claims against him. While wrestlers' court was once a regular thing backstage, stories have come out of younger and female talent being unjustly punished and the court being used to bully people over minor or even non-existent infractions. Nowadays, wrestlers' court has, like The Undertaker himself, been retired, but we doubt the dead man will ever forget the time that he was the defendant. One name who was no doubt summoned to wrestler's court in his career is Shawn Michaels, who may be one of WWE's most respected people today, but that wasn't always the case. In the 1990s, Michaels was notoriously difficult to be around, thanks in part to his substance problems, and there's an infamous story of him being attacked by six Marines in 1995. Speaking on the Impulsive podcast this week, Shawn remembered what little he could of the incident, which was, unsurprisingly, very little. I know as much as what I've known back then because I was all hammered and then I woke up in the hospital. I don't know how accurate that is because we were all not in the best shape. I'm sure I was being obnoxious but I have no recollection of any of that. The last thing I can remember is dropping my coat off in the coat check. Then I'm waking up in the hospital. Unfortunately, I was in that position a lot of times. I would wake up in an emergency room and go get three or four more hours of sleep, go to the gym, go wrestle. I was very functioning. Michael's incident with the Marines was so bad that he was unable to defend the Intercontinental title at that year's In Your House Great White North event, and the title would be awarded to Dean Douglas, who immediately lost it to Razor Ramon. Since finding religion in the early 2000s, Michaels has turned his life around, and there's not been any more incidents like these, but many of HBK's toughest battles didn't happen in the ring. Most recently, Sean has been training Logan Paul for his upcoming match with Roman Reigns, which will mark Paul's third official match for WWE. While the YouTuber impressed fans at WrestleMania and SummerSlam, many feel that an undisputed WWE Universal title match is both too soon for him and the finish is too obvious. Reigns is the heavy favorite to win this Saturday in Riyadh, but while speaking to The Verge, Logan Paul said that fans will be forced to think differently about him after Crown Jewel. If the WWE fans don't already respect me, after Crown Jewel in Saudi Arabia on November 5th, you'll be forced to respect me. You might not like me, I might not be your favorite wrestler, but you'll have to respect what I can do in that ring, and that's my goal. In addition to Shawn Michaels, Paul has been training with Drew Gulak and Hurricane Shane Helms, so he certainly has plenty of experienced trainers on his side. Will all this training result in a title change? We seriously doubt it. But Logan Paul is looking to win the respect of fans, as well as the undisputed WWE Universal Championship at Crown Jewel. And we're ending today with FTR, who have proven themselves as one of the best tag teams in wrestling today, holding gold both in and out of WWE. Right now, the team hold the IWGP, AAA, and Ring of Honor World Tag Team titles, but a recent social media post has fans speculating about their future. 
Taking to Instagram, Dax Harwood spoke about the journey he and Cash Wheeler have gone on already and ended with an ominous message. Thank y'all for going on this journey with us. Not sure where the next few years will take us, but I can't wait for one last run. Fans were quick to speculate as to what Harwood means by one last run, as there's been no signs of the group splitting or either man planning to hang up their boots anytime soon. Whatever the future holds for FTR, the group has already proven to be one of the best tag teams of the modern era, but we'll just have to see what both men accomplish in a few years' time. Well guys, that's our news for today. Please share your comments below. Also hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon to receive all notifications. And as always, thanks for watching.